Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning. All right, all right, we're gonna do a little change of gear here. I was back in the green room, it was real six o'clock, so we're gonna try to be 9.15. All right, we're gonna try to be 9.15. All right, I am Tabari Wallace, and we are here. We are here trying to motivate, reinvigorate, and make sure we set the stage for setting high expectations for all. All right, and you're looking at an illustration of what high expectations can do. Um, why it matters is it kind of moves you from where you are to where you are going or where you didn't even think you could be just by another caring adult. At the end of this, you're gonna hear me say, every child is one caring adult away from success. All right, there's that little boy. Don't laugh, Freebird. I know you're back there falling out. Please don't take any pictures of that. All right, no pictures whatsoever. That little boy up there was from what we call Five Points, New Bern, North Carolina. Right smack dab in the middle of about three projects, okay? And that little boy sitting up there had parents, all right? Had parents, you never know where those high expectations come from. You never know where those caring adults come from, but had parents that was like, uh, I don't know if you've seen the memes on social media, you gonna learn. <laughs> How we get out of this situation is, you're gonna go to school, I, unlike today, when, when the teachers picked up the phone, I was already guilty. They didn't even have to ask what I did in school. It was already guilty. Oh, oh this is Miss Wiggins and Tabari. <laughs> that's what it was. I was already in trouble because that's how much it was valued. You're going to do your work. I'm not, not going to say I'm smart or this and that. I just did my work. All right? But those high expectations came from that. And I'm standing here today because of it. But it also goes to school. All right. It also is that I had teachers that would not allow me all right, to use where I come from and my socioeconomic background or my cultural status as an excuse. You gonna learn. That's what my teachers was. That's how, that's the age when I came up. Some of y'all are my age, y'all know exactly what I mean. Not doing your homework, really? Uh, that was a scary situation, not getting to school and you didn't do your homework. It's a whole different time back then, a whole different. We have all those rights we got now, right? You got a lot of rights. Kids got rights now. Oh, 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 oh well, now you, you, well, go to timeout. What? The teacher was like, you're going to do it regardless. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm going to pick up that phone. All right? But that little boy translated to what I try to feed into my students now because there was no excuses that we can use. All right? As educators, we have big hearts. We are the social worker. We're the nurse. You know, with a teacher, with a confidant, sometimes with a pastor, you know, whatever it happens, whatever it needs to get that child over the hump is what we do as educators. But sometimes our heart is too big and we kind of feel sorry for them. All right, we kind of feel sorry for, for where you're coming from and what you're doing. And then we begin to give people things. All right? Well, I'm not standing here today, and those students are not here today from being given something. What I'm going to ask you is to invest in that future human capital. I want you to motivate that future human capital. Don't give them anything, all right? Because why I say that is when they go to the light bill place or they go to apply for a loan, pay their mortgage, is that lady behind the counter looking over her glasses? Is that lady really going to give anything? Bill's due on the 9th, right? You don't pay it on the 9th, lights out on the 10th, correct? So we as educators don't give anything. The reason why I say that those kids right there, I had two middle schools that the same approach took place. I lived it so I knew how to move. They had four, the four projects I told you about, they piled them all into one school when we redistrict the county, okay? Look it up, H.J. McDonald, Havelock Mill, okay? When they redistrict H.J. McDonald, they put us all in one and moved the kids, other kids to the fluent school. So what I did, I said, okay, then they put me there after the redistrict, first year. So we all had to make, yeah, I laughed too. I was like, really? I said, move me from Havelock Middle. We're in the 70s. We're killing it down there. We got teachers in place. We got a culture going. Kids are believing high expectations. We're moving. And we were split right down the middle, 50-50, demographically. So we get all that set in place, and they move me to this school. I'm like, okay. All right, then it's all right, Mr. Wallace, make it happen. But I talked to those kids. I said, you know what? We all in this together. We're going to make it. Remember that thing I told you? You going to learn. We're going to do it. We didn't give them anything, we empowered them. We let them know we believed in them. We continued to push them. We invested in them. 
Homework, they did it. We loved them when it was time to be loved. We gave them consequences when it was time to be, be uh, given consequences. And we called ourselves one squad. We said it every day. One vision, one school, one squad. And then because I had four projects in there, I had to bring a hook in there. You got to make it cool, hip. I was like, all day. And the kids loved it. They rallied around it all day. They sang it in church. Amen, all day. Wrong place. Don't do it there. Wrong place. But it was something the kids believed in. We didn't give them anything, but they believed in it. So they did their work. They participated in class. They behaved so they can stay in class. And we got better. And over two year periods, I can say right now that those children who they didn't think could do it because you threw them all in there together, outperformed their affluent counterparts, never had a year of regression. Got there, they were at 51%. I think we ended it at 68%. Two years. Two years. Simply by having high expectations. Simply by having high expectations. That's the man right now getting it in. Y'all think Donnell Cannon can do it. Y'all ain't seen my full keynote, buddy. <laughs> yeah, I got some for you, D. You didn't think you was in the speech, did you? All right, now, I'm gonna end with this right here, all right? Everything that's the big buzzword, equity, all right? Equity right now is a big buzzword, and sometimes, you know, it makes people squirm in their seats when you start talking about it, whatever, but I'm gonna put it in perspective for you for high expectations, okay? Equity, remember I said don't give them anything. Equality is that right there, all right? As I love to tease James Ford, he loves using this scenario. Equality is everybody in here gets a pair of Reeboks. I know, a lot of the ladies look at me, I don't wear no Reeboks. <laughs> Better give me some heels, give me some pumps. All y'all ladies look, don't put me in no Reeboks. Well, the fellas thinking the same thing. Because I don't wear Reeboks either. I like Jordans myself. All right? All right? That's equ equality. Everybody gets it. Okay? Equity is... You want to kind of stack the deck, give, give, there's that word again, give to those that we perceive do not have. All right, that's equity. All right, give. I'm telling you, you're hurting children when you give them things. Don't give them anything, let them earn it. Case in point, look at your lost and found when you go back to school. Yeah, some expensive stuff in there, ain't it? And everything you see in that lost and found, mama bought it. They didn't earn it. They didn't have to work for it. So when they lose it, I'm going to buy me another one. All right? If they buy it, they have to work, mow grass, and do whatever to get them joys. They the first ones in that office. Mr. Wallace, have you seen my red shoes? I got one, but I lost the other one. Really? How did you do that? <laughs> but they come looking for it. Don't give them anything. You're hurting them. All right? But this is liberation, ladies and gentlemen. All right, this is where we need to be as a society, okay? Don't give them anything. What I'm going to ask you to do and society to do, and, and, and as we commiserate with politicians and lawmakers and this and that, remove the wall. Remove the barrier to opportunity. Invest in me so that I can go to school. Invest in me so the gatekeepers of secondary education won't keep me out of the school I want to go to. All right? When you get to school, Remove the barrier to opportunity so I can have the resources to be successful. Then when I complete school, remove the barrier so I can go get the job that I want to have, that I work so hard to get. Little stop gaps in school, that's what we do as educators, correct? Kids must experience success to be able to make it contagious and infectious for the next one. Contrary to popular opinion, kids breed off of one another. You know, if the team's doing good and you're on a state championship team, I'm not going to be the one to make us lose. It's almost like herding sheep, ladies and gentlemen. It is checkers, not chess. Remove the barriers to opportunity. Set high expectations and your babies will take care of the rest. Your babies will take care of the rest. Those high expectations can come anywhere from the bus driver, the cafeteria person, custodian, it takes nobody to check on a baby and be like, how'd you make on that science test? Number one, the child's shocked. Man, how you know I had a science test? Well, I made a C, Mr. Wallace, but I, I can do better. Okay, I'm going to check on you next time. What a child going to make the next time? They ain't going to do it for them, but they will do it for that caring adult. One, caring adult away from success. Just one. And they take all forms. They take all forms. Okay? So, while we're going into that, because I think I see Brenda looking around the corner, must be getting close to that, that time. <laughs>